Dude, Danny, that blows me away. Going into year seven. Yeah. That he's been there seven years. Well, who do you got? Who do you think is a better team, the Bills or the Texans? So I, I still think it's the Bills, and it's because of that guy. Now, C.J. Stroud might be quickly becoming a top five quarterback, but you guys know I think that that's a top two quarterback. So, and everything else, it's pretty even. The weapons on mm-hmm. Houston are better than the weapons on Buffalo. The running game on Buffalo has been way better than the running game for Houston. The defenses, depending on health, have kind of been, been spotty this year. Neither team has an impressive win. The Texans have beaten the Colts, Bears, and Jaguars. The Bills have beaten the Cardinals, Dolphins, and Jaguars. Buffalo Bill out, uh, blew out Jacksonville. Houston only beat them by four. I think these teams are both very close. The Super Bowl odds reflect it. So I will go with the team that has won for longer and has Josh Allen. Yeah, I think Houston's probably an overall better team. Uh, they haven't played great this year. They haven't been impressive. You know, I know they're 3-1. and one, That's all that matters. Yeah. So to me, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, I think we're going to get a better sense of what the Bills are. I think they're going to lose this game. And I guess I've said for a while now that they're going to be 3-3. Three and three. I don't trust their defense. But one issue I have for this game is the fact that Joe Mixon's barely played this year. Right, and Cam Akers is not the guy he used to be, you know, four or five years ago. So I'm not sure how much Houston is able to run the football successfully, even against right. what I still think is a less than great uh, Buffalo Bills defense. But if anyone comes out and tells you that they've got a great feel for this game, they're lying to you. Because there's no way you could feel uber confident for either one of these teams, which is why the game's essentially a pick em. I think Houston is better. Than the Bills. Right, your I, lean is Houston, my lean, lean is Buffalo. But, it, but I want to be clear, it's a lean. I'm not coming to saying, you know, the Bills can't go there and win. Obviously they can. Yeah. And Josh Allen is the difference maker. But it's going to be an interesting battle between a second-year stud quarterback and a, geez, a seven-year stud quarterback. You know, whichever one of those two guys has the better game wins this game. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to lean on Buffalo. I think the Buffalo is a little bit better from the standpoint of they run the ball better, they take some pressure off their quarterback. Um, Obviously, both teams very good. I think the coaching, like from a coaching standpoint, I'd lean to D'Amico Ryans. Really? Yeah, I I just think D'Amico is a great motivator of guys, great motivator of men. I think he's a really good coach, really has his finger on the pulse of the whole organization. So I would lean that way, but the quarterback and the run game for Buffalo makes me feel like they can go in there and win that game. I I feel like it's the best game of the weekend because it feels like we could easily see this game in January. For sure. This this feels like a divisional round matchup, a wild card weekend matchup. Both of these teams uh, come into the year with Super Bowl aspirations, win a division plans, all of those sort of things. Both these quarterbacks think that they can win an MVP sooner than later. I I, I think it's the best game of the the, card. The the other aspect of this game is that the Texans are going to win that division by four games. Like, the division's a joke now, especially Jacksonville's 0-4, right? Talking about has Peterson lost the locker room. Where the Bills, I still think, are going to be in a dogfight with the New York Jets. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So, you know, there's more pressure on the Bills winning a game like this in Houston because Houston's going to win that division by default. They're going to host the home playoff game, and we can all lock that in now. Yeah, well, the other thing would be how do the Bills respond to a loss because right. it wasn't just a loss. Oh, they got embarrassed. That, that was an embarrassment. Yeah. Right? See, that, I still, I, I still don't agree with that. Like it, it was lopsided at the end. They were down 21-10. They played a terrible first half. Buffalo crushed them in the first half. They're down 21-10. They had a touchdown drive. Then they have the ball. They're driving. They do that goofy trick play that results in a fumble, and then the route is on. Like I. I think they had figured something out there. Now, listen, they, they didn't come back when they were down 28-10. It ended up being 35-10 as a final score. But I, I think the Bills actually started to look a lot better in the second half of that game. But All I'm right. on an island on that. All right. So, anyhow, that may be fact. It could be fiction. We're going to go to a little segment called Fact or Fiction, where I give you guys a statement. You tell me whether it is fact or fiction. So, let's start with Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is a top five quarterback in the NFL right now. Is that fact or is that fiction? It's the easiest one you're going to give us. I don't even know what the other ones are. Fact. I might even say top three quarterback right now. Give me my stats, boys. Yeah, there we go. Baker Full Mayfield screen. right now. Passing touchdown, second in the league. Rating, which I don't even know how they come up with the rating anyway. Yeah, it's top stupid. five, top four, passing yards. Blah, 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 blah. The dude has uh, gone to Florida, much like Ponce de Leon did, and found the fountain of youth. Instead of the fountain of youth, he found the fountain of talent. 
Baker Mayfield is a legitimate top five quarterback in the NFL. Ponce was not. Okay, I just want to ask you one quick question. Yeah. Is Patrick Mahomes? A top five quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, because then that is not based on just this year. Because Mahomes statistically is not a top five quarterback just this year. Fair enough. So under I've seen enough of Mahomes to know he's a top five so quarterback. So without under that guy's that I will say fiction. Because uh -huh. if we are clearly, if you're saying Mahomes is a top five guy, you're using more than just four games. And so I will use more than four games for Baker Mayfield. He is very good. He's been very good since he's been in Tampa. He's crazy fun to watch. But I can I Roger uh, mm -hmm. Mahomes. Allen. No, go ahead, Rogers. No, no, no. Go no. no. I say <laughs> Lamar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamar. Yeah, Lamar. Yeah. Purdy. Stafford. Purdy. I just want to leave room for Purdy. Purdy. No, he's not top five. Yeah, top I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go fiction. You hey, lost man. to the Denver Broncos. So did the Jets. Right. Well, so Aaron right Rodgers is no longer in the top five either. All right, you lost to the Denver Broncos top at five. home. Like, I think he's having an unbelievable year, and what he's been able to do with his own career has been absolutely amazing. There's no question about it. He had that to be resurgence. Fair, it really is if good. If we're also using other years, the guy threw for 4,000 yards last year, yeah. 28 yeah. touchdowns yep. and 10 picks, and he picked up right where he left off. Look, I get it. Put, guys, top, put, put that to be top 10. I had no problem with you it. You guys top are five. part of the mainstream media that believes in fake news. Baker Mayfield is a star. <laughs> Start talking about him the right way. All right, let's move on. Fact or fiction, <coughs> Jaden Daniels is Excuse actually this good. Is that fact or fiction, Danny? It's fiction. This is, this is history. What? Yes, <laughs> he has been amazing. Like, two things can be true. Jaden Daniels is going to be the offensive rookie of the year. He looks great. He's one of the surprise stories of the NFL. Praise, praise, praise. He's setting records for completion percentage and efficiency and all that. And it can also be true that Drew Locke had a great three-game stretch as a rookie. And Robert Griffin had a great season sure. as a rookie. Like it, Mitch Trubisky had a six-touchdown game where he threw for over 300 yards. Like A great four-game stretch does not make a career. I do not believe that in November and December, he will be in the MVP conversation, which is where he is right now. So he is not this good. Uh, I would say fact. Oh, my God. I got nothing else to compare it to. I can only judge what I've seen with my own two eyes. And four games in, he is as electric and awesome as any rookie quarterback has ever been. And if we're going to anoint C.J. Stroud as a top-level, top-tier quarterback based on having played what? 21 games in his NFL career. And winning a playoff game. Sure. And being competitive against Baltimore sure. in a playoff game. I got to give this kid the love, too, because all I've seen is greatness out of him. Yeah, fact. I'm going to go fact. What? I'm going to go fact. Yes. Listen, oh he is this He is this good. And the thing I love about you this kid, I've done two of his games. I, I, his work ethic, his oof. commitment to being a professional, hey, football or playing quarterback is not a job to him. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, that's... he knocks on, he knocks on, they're at the hotel. He knocks on Cliff Kingsbury's door, the offensive coordinator, at 530 in the morning, like pops his head in and goes, what are we doing? That's a Saturday morning. I'm not saying All he's not a great does... kid. I'm not saying it's not a great story. Yeah. You see, but you guys are both telling me that he is going to be in the MVP conversation at the end of the year? Yes. As, okay. a, as currently yes. constructed. Okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right, let's move on. Fact or fiction, Travis Kelsey is washed up. Craig, is that fact or that's fiction. Easy. That's easy. Come on. <laughs> You're wish casting. Look, he's uh, four games into the season. Give me my stats. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey, 21 targets. That's five a game. He's only got three catches a game. He's only got 158 yards. He's apparently allergic to the end zone, and he's not making plays after he gets the ball either. So I'm of the belief that the Travis Kelsey we've seen thus far this year is what he is now. And I want to be clear about this. That's not a knock. That's called father time. That's what happens when you get into your 30s in the NFL and you're a skilled position guy. You lose a little mini step. Maybe, oh, I don't know, you have distractions away from the field. Maybe you don't work out as hard. Maybe you don't take it as seriously. Maybe you're filming game show pilots for Amazon and talking on a podcast with your brother and traveling all over the world with your girlfriend and doing all the things you never did when you were focused I'm being the best tight end in football. He, father time always wins, and it's won this with this guy too. Father time is undefeated. I'm completely with you. 
Last year, we saw him be pretty pedestrian for the vast majority of the regular season. A few really good games sprinkled in, and then he was dominant in the playoffs. So this guy well, deserves the benefit of the doubt for me. Can I push back on that for a teeny bit? Sure. He essentially had another 1,000-yard regular season. He only did it because he missed the first game and the against Detroit, game. and he sat out. He could have played that game. He is not pacing nearly to what he did last year, even in a year yeah. where right. he was not as dominant. He was at least catching the ball more consistently. He looked better against the Chargers. Yeah. Yes. Like, like yeah. This past week, he looked better against – that game looked a lot like most Old of the games. Old school Travis. I, 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 last year's Travis. Right. I'm, all, I'm with you. Yeah, it's fiction. I mean, I, listen, I know it's off to a slow start. I know they're trying to figure out – they're trying to figure out their offense. Travis Kelsey's going to be just fine. Do you lose a little bit? What you lose athletically, he makes up for for the neck up. He's going to have big numbers. There's only, you know, it's there's going to be a weekend here very soon where he has big numbers and he takes off. Remember how so, you said a moment ago, and you're saying it's yes. more specific to quarterbacks, so I'm respectful of that, right. that it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Being a professional athlete is a lifestyle. Correct. To you're be right. damn 100%. good. 100%. And when all of a sudden, because of your greatness, and let's be fair, because of who you're dating, all of a sudden that lifestyle changes. And no one can argue that it hasn't changed because it has. It's Rocky Three. I keep telling you guys that. Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.